In this video, we are going to look at what is high availability and fault tolerance and how these terms are completely different from each other. We are going to look at when to use these techniques. And finally, we will discuss the case study on a food delivery application. I'm choosing Swiggy here because a lot of public information are available about Swiggy uh, on how they handle fault tolerance. So if you don't know what is Swiggy, Swiggy is a app based out of India, which is similar to DoorDash or Uber Eats. We're going to look at how Swiggy handles fault tolerance using different techniques, which they use internally. With that, let's get started. So what is high availability? Let's imagine an application. Usually we get traffic to this application. And what happens if let's say the application goes down, we won't be able to serve any information back to the user or the caller. That is when we need availability. So availability in essence is bringing in multiple instances of the application so that we can serve traffic via a load balancer or an API gateway. So even if one particular application goes down, the other application serves traffic via the load balancer. And the load balancer keeps track of which application is up or which instance is up using health check endpoints. So load balancer will keep on doing health check every few seconds so that it can know which is the healthy instance and what kind of traffic can be redirected to which instance. This is what we call as high availability. There are different terms which we use these days. We call it primary and secondary. We call them high availability or we call them disaster recovery. Um, usually this kind of a setup has active active kind of a scenario like what we saw in the first example here. We have active active scenario where both the applications are up. So even if one application goes down, the other is there. There is also an active passive scenario, but then that doesn't really solve the high availability issue. So active active essentially solves the high availability problem, which we have in microservices. Now, on the other hand, what is fault tolerance? Fault tolerance is withstanding the failures which are happening when you connect to different systems. Let's take an example of service one connecting to service two. Imagine service two is down. Now what happens to service one? Are the calls going to fail or are we going to fall back to something else? Essentially the ability for the service one here to handle dependent failures is known as fault tolerance. The ability for the service one to handle dependent failures is known as fault tolerance. There is also something called resiliency, which is like how much of these fault tolerance can be taken. We can discuss that in a separate video if you're interested. Do let me know if you want me to make a video on resiliency. How is it different from fault tolerance or how is it even relevant, right? Now coming to the fault tolerance, there are different techniques using which we can solve fault tolerance. We can use retries, fallbacks using circuit breakers or direct fallbacks. Uh, in fact, we can use load shading if let's say there are some API latencies which we observe. So we can use these techniques to solve fault tolerance. So if you don't know about what is load shading circuit breakers, I do have a lot of videos on these uh, in the channel. Circuit breaker, I have done it in the past. Uh, load shading, I have recently done it. So go and take a look at uh, those videos in the channel. So when should we use high availability and fault tolerance? Usually high availability is useful when we want to provide an SLA or an SLO for a service. Usually these are mentioned in terms of nines. They denote what and how much available are these services. For example, let's say 99.999 whatever denotes what type of availability SLA which we are providing for our customers. When we are creating software as a service application, high availability plays an important role for customers to know how much downtime a particular service can go through. So that's when we will use high availability. So obviously we will have to have a high availability in addition to other techniques. So when do we use fault tolerance? When we want to handle external failures and we don't want our services to go through those failures and want to handle it in a way where we can serve better user experience, that's when we use fault tolerance. There are different techniques for it. Circuit breakers, retries, load shedding are different techniques using which we can do fault tolerance. So we are going to discuss about these in the next slide. So how does Swiggy handles fault tolerance? So Swiggy does both fallbacks and also circuit breakers. They also do retries in some cases, for example, in payments, you can do retries. Same way with circuit breakers, they do fallback. I'll show that in a bit. Before that, let's understand the architecture of a food delivery application. If you have never seen my video on food delivery application, go check out that video. I have in depth explained each and every service, how these are like connected with each other. In this video, I'm not going to go in depth into individual service, but I'm just going to concentrate only on the fault tolerance and the high availability part of it. Imagine this is our architecture. All the services are backed by an API gateway and a load balancer, which can load balance request into individual services 
and individual services like restaurant service card service are scalable so they are not just one service which are there there are multiple instances of these services running in a clustered environment or in a fleet there are different systems like restaurant service uh, banks and the payment gateways these are external to the application the blue ones are the ones which are hosted by the food delivery application now to show the fault tolerance scenario imagine that i have a payment which is going to be pending and i want to like order a food so what if the payment fails in the razor pay due to some issue with the balance or maybe the bank gateways are down etc right now this gives a bad user experience if i just leave it and ask the user to try from the beginning right one option for us is to fall back to a alternate payment gateway mechanism so for example cash on delivery is not going to fail because that's the ultimate non technical option which is available so you don't have to worry about any other dependent system instead you just mark the particular transaction as cash on delivery and then you just ask the user cash when the product is delivered so obviously we know that that fallback is going to work and here is where we use the fallback technique for handling faults there is also another mechanism which is predominantly common we do retries right which is not a famous technique but uh, it's another option where you can go and like retry the payment option but there is no guarantee that it's going to succeed right however with the fallback where we did to cash on delivery we know that okay the cash on delivery is not going to fail unless the user is going to default but um, in in this case we are trying a technical um, software issue so we can use fallbacks or retries the other option is falling back to a different payment system earlier let's say we were doing a upi based transaction or a credit card transaction then you fall back to like credit card 2 or something else maybe you can configure that as well those are different techniques you can use for fallbacks or even circuit breakers the other option is the load shedding imagine that the restaurant uh, menu or the cash is like taking a long time to respond so what happens in that case let's say one particular instance is very bad and that particular instance is taking more latency or more response time to take uh, some specific data from the cash in that case we can remove that particular service from the fleet by using load shedding this is another technique which you can use to eliminate fault tolerance within your application to show you this i have a real example of how swiggy handles payment failures here i have opened the swiggy application i'm going to book a particular food item i'm trying to fill all the details in i've just put a dummy address in i'm also selecting the payment gateway here i have multiple options here i have multiple credit cards saved i also have the upi so U- upi is specific to india it's unified payment interface using which we can transact from one bank to another without directly doing complicated stuff so that's one unique payment feature which india had introduced and we have been using it for a while now so i'm going to use upi so i have selected google pay as upi and i'm just going to the payment option now indirectly i'm not going to like open the payment um system or the google pay to pay the upi payment instead i'm going to cancel it and see what happens now the moment i cancel the payment fails or when the payment fails i'm getting my redirection back to the um, payment failure page where i'm able to now order without even paying so here we have a new option introduced by swiggy recently where i can go and like pay online later but i can allow the order to be proceeded to the restaurant so that the food is getting prepared i don't have to worry about delay in the food delivery which is a unique option which i haven't seen in other uh, platforms but it's a very intelligent thing because when you are hungry you don't want to wait for a payment gateway to succeed when the food preparation itself is going to take much long the obviously the other option is retry so you are given both option there is a fallback option in this page and there is also a retry option where you can choose whatever you want this is one intelligent thing which swiggy has done in the recent times which i thought would be very helpful when i show a fault tolerance scenario now let's read the blog what swiggy has done internally to handle fault tolerance so swiggy has something called geo filtering service using which they filter out users based on geographical location and identify which location of uh, the restaurant or which are location or which are restaurants which are nearby to that particular users geographical location so whenever there is a fault in the geo filtering service they do have um, fallback mechanism if you see here if there are 20 percentage failures they redirect and then they open up the circuit the moment a circuit opens all the requests are redirected to a different service so the client 
calls a directional serviceability which is their main service but if those service but if there are major failures in this particular service call they do redirect to a radial serviceability which does some imaginary circle or imaginary boundary in terms of selecting restaurants that's why if you see sometimes some restaurant show up and some restaurant don't show up this is because of some failures in the service and then circuit breaker opens up due to which more restaurants are like showing up for you now for a particular period of time that way the user experience is not bad still the user will be able to look at restaurants etc there is also something during the scaling so during the distance calculation let's say between the restaurant and the home right there are some calculations which are required during that time there are different options swiggy does so they don't want to fail and even if it fails the fallback also can fail right so they do like two three levels of failure handling for example they have this google distance cache reader which is a cache if the cache is missed then they do send it to the uh, next service which is the open street maps so osm is nothing but open street maps they do like send some of the traffic to that because those traffics are failed there is no cache information in the um, in the cache whatever they maintain now even if it fails in the osm they do send it directly to the um, harvard sane calculation which is again like a crow file which they call it like a crow fly distance which is like if the restaurants are like somewhat nearby you can just like if you look at a crow how it can fly right it cannot fly far it can f- fly to a specific distance so they do have like another mechanism so there are three levels of fallbacks which swiggy does in terms of calculating the distance from a home to a restaurant which is again intelligent um, enough same way they do have um, caching cluster failures let's say there are different cache clusters they do take care of failover if you um, remember i was mentioning about high availability right in order to provide high availability you generally have primary primary kind of a thing or primary secondary like i was mentioning some people use disaster recovery so this is exactly the same right you have a primary cluster which is serving traffic but then you realize the primary cluster is not up to date and there is a failure because of which circuit opened now you switch back to the failover as the primary and then you start tr- serving traffic so that's how you can handle uh, failovers automatically as well so this is how swiggy does uh, handle it there is also a part 2 blog where they are also mentioned uh, there is one more service they do like um, expand their fleet if let's say one of the worker node goes down the worker the other worker nodes which are there they can like expand and then have more um, worker threads which can execute back end workflows or long or long running uh, workflows right they do these in every level so they do fault tolerance in every service like there is a prediction service the prediction service also has a fault tolerance mechanism it connects to data science platform which is again another team if let's say there are failures when connecting to those platform they do have again circuit breakers open they do fall back to an in memory cache that can get data from um, that particular days facts Of course these are very interesting blogs you can go in depth read about how swiggy has done it um i have just given a gist of how they do it but the important thing to note is you can use different techniques it's specific to your implementation or the use case but giving a fault tolerant user experience is what users would expect when you're creating a software as a service product now coming back to high availability high availability like i mentioned uh, i have just mentioned a um, load balancer kind of diagram here this is a oci infrastructure diagram oracle cloud infrastructure based uh, imagine this is a region so within oci there are regions and within regions there are availability domains availability domains are different rack different power etc right so this is completely powered by a different set of uh, racks and different set of power inputs and outputs same way every ad has its own Uh, infrastructure connected right if there is a failure most of the time it affects only the ad right so how do we make sure we handle high availability is deploy our application the application is deployed in the web server here so deploy the application or the microservice into multiple ad's that way even if one of them goes down it is there to serve traffic same way the load balancers are also like segregated across multiple ad's there is obviously an active and a standby similar to how we have an active active kind of a thing there is an active and standby if the active goes down automatically the standby gets kicked in so the dns routing logic which is here it should be able to route the traffic to the uh, corresponding instance via the load balancer this is how you can bring in high availability for an individual microservice let me summarize what we just discussed initially we saw what is high availability and fault tolerance high availability is making sure the service is up 
to serve traffic to our customers and there is very minimal downtime which is communicated fault tolerance on the other hand is an ability for a particular service to handle failures these are mostly external failures and how we can handle these failures and give a better user experience to the clients we saw when to use each of these we also finally discussed how swiggy uses fault tolerance to feed hungry people like us i hope you learned something new from this particular video as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you think you need me to make a specific video do mention that in the comment section below see you again in the next video thank you very much